Hello, how are you? I hope you're doing good. Um, so today is going to be a video on how to change the travel or adjust the travel on a RockShox 35 Silver R. I apologize, I just didn't have time to do the filming. Um, I took a few photos, so I'll, I'll explain what I did and, and how I did it. Now the first thing is, um, this is technically possible to do without doing a complete lower leg service but you are going to lose the oil in the leg um, so you will have to replace that oil so it's almost worth waiting until you're going to do a lower leg service to do this um, there's obviously two sides of the fork as you look at it from the front you've got the left and the right side my right, your left um, so on the right side as you look at the front of the bike is where the coil spring is um, you can see here in this picture, this is the top cap. Be careful, like, um, because it's not a very deep nut, it's really easy to round the edges off. As you can see um, here from this blurry photo, um, I've rounded the edges off. Um, so yeah, just be careful when you do that top cap. It's not going to be super torqued up. You definitely don't want to torque it too much uh, when you put it back. But just take off um, this cap here. The spring is a little bit compressed, it's not super compressed, um, which is great because it means that um, you know, the top cap's not going to come flying off or anything. Um, and after the top cap, if you've never opened it up, you get these two preload spaces, um, look kind of like plastic washers, I guess. Um, now, if when you sort of go into your attack position, when you're standing up on the bike, there's no sag in the suspension, um, you're going to want to whip one or two of those away when you put it back together. Uh, but they're the thing that set the sag uh, with the coil. So if you're getting um, too much sag, unfortunately, um, you'll have to change the spring because you can only have two preload spaces. If you're not getting any sag, then you can remove the preload spaces and maybe um, it'll improve the ride. Okay. Um, so once you take the top cap off and those preload spaces, straight away you're going to pull out the spring. It's not attached to anything. You can see the shaft in the background. This shaft in the background um, is the last bit. And this is where you actually change the travel. And there's a plastic cap on the top that the spring sits on. So it just sits on that cap and then you can press it down with the top cap and that's it. That's how um, the springy suspension works. Okay. Um, there's three holes. When I first opened it up, so this is a picture after I've adjusted the travel. When I first opened this up, this metal shaft the plastic top cap was 30 centimeters down the shaft so the shaft came through the top of the plastic cap um, and here is what you and here is where you see a um, sort of an old cheap Torx screwdriver on that kind of thing you get out of Christmas cracker it's not high quality but um, I don't want to ruin anything that was um, and this is actually what I used to bang the pin out now if you look at the plastic bit, um, sorry, just quickly, uh, I measured the spring at about 32.5 centimeters and somewhere approaching 33 millimeters at the top. If you can get a spring of a similar size, you can just replace it. Yeah, so um, RockShox don't sell springs for this model, uh, but you can buy the springs um, on an, from another manufacturer if you want and drop those in. Um, sidebar, right, going back to my point. So you can see here where I've got the screwdriver, there is a pin. Now, if you actually look at the shaft, because the pin is hollow, um, it's kind of like a spring pin, right? So it's not completely closed off. There's a little gap to allow it to compress and you go out again. So it sort of compresses as you bash it in, and as you hit it out, uh, it opens up a little bit, right? So, as you can see here, and as I said, this plastic bit is at the top of the shaft. If the plastic bit is at the top of the shaft, you've hit maximum travel. At that point, you can only reduce travel. But for me, the shaft originally stuck out that plastic bit by 30 centimeters. So I've gone from 100 millimeters of travel to 130 millimeters of travel, right? So all I've done is knock that pin out, moved it up, realigned the holes, and then um, not the pin back in. So I, I first got the pin back in the plastic bit um, and then I actually uh, I've got like a wooden work bench um, 
and I put the pin down on the wooden bar bench, got a plastic hammer and I sort of beat it in most of the way and then what you're seeing here is me just doing the final adjustment um, just making sure that pin's in properly right? so I moved the pin, um, it wasn't too hard the hardest bit is obviously because it's hollow, I don't know what the proper tool is for this but because it's hollow you have to find a perfect sized thing to get um, the pin out it's one of those things that's hard to start and gets easier as the pin um, goes out. I found that this particular Torx head was perfect for the job, um, so that's what I used. I was happily, I would happily damage this tool that I don't really use um, in order to get the pin out. So yeah, as you look on um, the side, it looks hollow. You can't see the pin. So what you have to do is you have to look down the top and then you can see the pin. Fortunately, I didn't have a lot of time to take these photos, um, but you can see that pin here a, a little bit. So yeah, that is, um, that's it, knock the pin out, move the slider up and down, put the pin back in. Now I have uh, what, what was a 100 millimeter version. Um, I upped it to 130 millimeters, which is the maximum because there's no more shaft coming out. If you have, for example, the 140 millimeter, you can up it to 160. And um, if you're on 160, the minimum is 140. Right, so if you've got the 140 millimeter travel version of the fork, you can't get to 100 millimeters. So one version is the 100 to 130 millimeters, and the other version is 160 to 140. Hope that makes sense. Uh, but you can't take a 160 millimeter travel Rockshock Silver R and make it 100 millimeters, and you can't take a 100 millimeter Rockshock Silver R and make it 160 millimeters. You can, however make the 100 millimetre, 120, 130, you know? Um, and that's that's basically um, it. So now um, the fork's 130 millimetres. What I found was the fork really came to life um, because obviously I, you've got three centimetres of compression. That that's, coil's allowed to come out a little bit more, so there's less preload on the coil, if you will, um, and there's a lot more moving about. It's a bit more buttery smooth. It's very good. Um, this fork is still a little bit let down by the damper. This is the damper if you've never seen it before, which is on the other side of the fork. Um, it's let down by the damper a little bit, so we need to do something to improve that here. As I've mentioned before, you can get a silver tanky damper, which is this one here, and you can put that in. Um, actually, what I'm looking to do, um, and this is a little bit crazy, requires a lot of customization. I'm looking to get a RockShox Yari motion control damper into mine. Um, and basically, here's my website. I'm gonna go through how I did it here. But effectively, you see the shaft here, which looks a lot stronger, and you've got this metal bolt on the top of this disc compared to this plastic thing. Um, that pretty much fits straight in, um, apparently. I haven't done it yet, so uh, don't take my word for it until I've done it. Um, and that gives you like eight um, rebound settings as opposed to the five over here and then this motion control this top cap does not fit yeah so you've either got to drill out the current top cap you've got or you have to get like another tap cap that does fit and then modify that to get the motion control down frame right so this is not for the faint heart like this is like proper um, you're probably gonna have to um, I'm hoping see this this hole slightly smaller and this hole slightly bigger there's also threads to deal with. Um, it's very complicated to get this to fit into the RockShop 35 Silver. This bottom bit will go in straight. This turn key will go in straight. Everything else is like proper custom work. Um, and you know, there's no troubleshooting. You've got to take that on yourself. But that's definitely for me. I'm going to attack the damping on this fork next um, with the aim of getting a slightly better performance out of it, but I must admit, going from 100 to 130 millimeters has really brought that fork alive, so I'm super happy with it. So yeah, you just want, take the pin out, put the pin back in, it's a little bit fiddly, it's not too difficult though. Um, just be careful when you put the top cap back on, because you have to compress the spring, it's really easy um, for the threads not to go in straight, so just take your time, be super careful, you do not want to um, take the threads out of this fork, otherwise um, it becomes a paperweight, so don't do that, yeah? Um, just be super careful. But that's it. Okay, hope that was useful. Bye.